Hold up a second. Has your provider told you that you need an NST or have they told you you might need continuous fetal heart rate monitoring when you're in labor? And what does all of that mean? I got you. Let's talk about fetal heart rate monitoring and what it means for your baby. Those three little letters, NST, that is basically the Grey's Anatomy way of saying non-stress test, which means what is your baby's heart doing when there is no added stress in the equation? Like the day-to-day -day functionings of your baby's heart while they are in utero and the things that you see on a non-stress test on the screen are going to be very similar to continuous heart rate monitoring. So I'm going to go over all of the things you might see and what it means for your baby's heart. Because my name is Tina B. I am a labor and delivery nurse with a certification in perinatal nursing. If this type of content interests you, go ahead and boop that subscribe button so you can continue learning with us. Now let's talk about what does this all mean? So you now know that an NST is checking in on your baby's heart while they are in your uterus, but why would your provider want to order this test for you? Well, there are lots of different reasons. Maybe your pregnancy is complicated. Maybe you have gestational diabetes or you have preeclampsia, or maybe you were at a routine ultrasound and they saw too little fluid or they saw too much fluid, or maybe you're old like me and they want to make sure your placenta is keeping up with your baby's demands. Or maybe you were at a routine prenatal appointment and when they listened to baby's heart rate with that little Doppler, they heard something that gave them some concerns. Maybe it was a little too slow or a little too fast, or maybe there was a skip beat, anything like that. But here's what's important. If you are ever confused as to why your provider will be ordering this type of test for you, please make sure you do ask them the question of why, because informed consent is super important. All right, you need an NST, you show up to your birthing site, what happens next? First thing I want you to know is that the minimum amount of time that this test is going to take is 20 minutes. And I say minimum because a lot of times we'll hand the baby a roadmap, but they decide that they want to go on a totally different path and it's going to take a lot longer for them to give us those reassuring things we're looking for to say, yep, that NST looks great. Your baby is happy and healthy right now. You can go home. And I'm going to talk about those reassuring things in just a moment. But a lot of times babies can be little stinkers and it's going to take a lot longer. So if you're plugging the parking meter, make sure Sure you plug in at least an hour and know that during your appointment you may have to add more time but you show up the first thing we're going to do is have you empty your bladder because you know that labor and delivery nurses we love an empty bladder and we'll probably test that pee if you put it in a cup for us for things we usually do like protein and sugars and blood and ketones and then once your bladder is empty we're going to have you lay on a bed now you could change into a hospital gown but in a lot of places you could just stay in your clothes if you are more comfortable with that and we're going to turn the monitor on and we're going to have two straps underneath you because those two straps are needed to hold on two monitors one monitor on the bottom that is going to be the ultrasound transducer and this is the one that's going to actually pick up your baby's heart rate and then on top we're going to put what's called a toco it's a pressure sensor and it's going to tell us if there is anything happening in your uterus you know that I am an intensely visual learner, so I'm actually going to draw out what you're going to see on the monitor so that you can get a really good understanding of what to expect. The first thing is, here's what your screen is kind of going to look like. On the top, this is going to be where your baby's heart rate is going to be seen. And then on the bottom, this is going to be where any uterine contractions are going to be seen. And I'm going to go over what is normal on both top and the bottom so that there are no surprises for you when you get hooked up. So one of the first things I want you to know when you're talking about baby's heart rate is that every baby's heart rate is a little bit different. So if your friend Susan was like, my baby's heart rate is 120, and then they put you on the monitor and your baby's heart rate is 145, that is totally okay because every baby is unique, right? But what you should know is that every baby's heart rate is going to fall within a normal range, a range that is acceptable for a baby's heart rate per minute. And that range is anywhere from 110 to 160. So we know that anything below 110 well, that is going to be concerning if it's going on for a long period of time. And anything above 160, that is also going to be concerning if it's going on for a prolonged period of time. But simply knowing their heart rate is not enough. We need more information. So knowing what your baby's average heart rate is, that's important, right? Because that's how many times a minute their heart's going to beat. And Gray's Anatomy term, we call this baseline. This is their baseline heart rate. And knowing that it is between 110 beats a minute and 160 beats a minute, that is also important because that's the normal range. But when you look at the monitor, you are not going to see a a static straight line all the way across like this. This would be concerning. What you will see is a beautiful jagged line that kind of goes above and below that average heart rate, that average line, because this is called 
variability. And we look for variability as a really reassuring sign because this means that their heart is functioning in a way that allows it to change beat to beat above and below their average heart rate. So variability is also an important thing to look for. If you thought I was all done, I got one more thing you can look for on the top half of this graph, and that is when your baby moves, do they increase their heart rate? Because like me and you, when we work out, you go on the treadmill, or you go on the bike, your heart rate is going to increase in response to that physical activity. And your baby, they are no different. When they move around in your uterus, their heart rate should increase in response. So when you come in for an NST, there's a high probability we're going to hand you a clicker or have you push a button anytime you feel your baby move because what we want to see on the monitor is that that movement happened and then your baby in response increases their heart rate Gray's anatomy time that's called an acceleration so what's this look like on the monitor here you're going to notice your baby's heart rate is in that normal range between 110 and 160 and again it is not a straight line it's not a static line it's going to move and be bumpy and jagged right because that's variability so it looks like this it's going to go up up down down up up down down around their average and then oh you mark that baby moved and what we should see is an acceleration in their heart rate and then it comes back down to baseline and continues going up up down down and then oh baby moved again because you know you've got a little samurai in there and then we're going to notice maybe up down up down this jagged bumpy line going above the baseline because baby has moved and we expect to see that increase in heart rate because here is a key term here a healthy baby can accelerate their heartbeat and in that 20 minutes fingers crossed we would like to see at least two of these accelerations of their heartbeat above their baseline just pump the brakes for one second i do want to mention that baby they have sleep cycles. So you may notice this, your baby is not moving around 24 seven, right? Because it's very normal for them to have quiet periods because they are sleeping in utero, but that will show up on your monitor because you're not gonna have those accelerations we just talked about, the ones that I'm looking for to say, yep, this NST looks great. So that's good to keep in mind as to one of the reasons why it might take longer than 20 minutes to get an NST that looks amazing. And there are medications that can cause babies to be a little bit sleepy and also also, smoking can cause babies to be a little bit sleepy. So if you have just smoked a cigarette before you have an NST, your baby might have a more flat tracing that takes us a little while to get reassuring things coming out of them. But rest assured, we do have things we can do to try to wake up those babies, but you may have to plug the meter if your baby's having a snooze. All right, I see you. You're like, Tina, please talk about drops in baby's heart rate or decelerations because these ones are the big, bad, scary ones, right? These are the ones people are concerned about, but decelerations, they're a lot harder to make it make sense because decelerations can be normal or they can be very abnormal. And it depends on multiple factors, like when do they happen and how low do they go and how long do they stay low for? But what I can tell you is that on an NST, you really shouldn't be seeing multiple decelerations because it is a non-stress test, meaning it is done when there's not that extra stress put on baby, no stress of labor or no stress of infection. So they really shouldn't be a part of the picture. But if you're on continuous fetal heart rate monitoring, then yes, you may see some dips in baby's heart rate. But again, they may not necessarily be abnormal. It just depends on what is happening with you and your pregnancy. So that's why it's important, I think, to talk with your team and discuss what you're seeing on the monitor and what it means for you and baby. So that is the top half of your monitor. But there's a whole section below it that we haven't talked about yet. It's very lonely. This is the part of the monitor that's gonna show you any uterine activity because this is connected to the pressure sensor that we put at the top of your abdomen. And if you remember, when you have a contraction or a tightening, the whole shape of your abdomen is gonna change. It's gonna go from that rounded shape up into an oval. And when it comes up into an oval, it pushes up into the pressure sensor, which comes out as a mountain on the bottom half of your monitor. Let's chat about what that looks like. Oh, now. When it is recording information, there's always going to be sort of a baseline amount of pressure when your abdomen or your uterus is at rest. And then as you have that contraction, it's going to come up like this. Your contraction is going to peak and then it's going to release and it's going to let go and it's going to come back down to that resting amount of pressure. And then some time might go on and you might have another contraction and it's going to come up like this. It's going to peak the contraction and it's going to come back down to rest. So this is sort of what it's going to look like on the bottom. It's not a straight line. It's not jagged like your baby's heart rate is. It's these smooth mountains. Now, here's something really cool. A lot of people, they'll look at the monitor and they'll see this big mountain and they'll say, oh, 
that was a big contraction. But I am here to tell you the only way that we can tell how strong a contraction are is based on how you feel it was, but also with our hands. It's called palpation. Watching the monitor and seeing the big mountains doesn't actually tell us how strong it is. It only tells us that something is happening in your uterus. And by the way, unless your NST is being done because you think you're in labor, it is really unlikely that you're going to be seeing these big mountains on the uterine part of your monitor. You're only going to be seeing these if you are in labor and contracting or if you are on continuous fetal heart rate monitoring. Once your NST is done, if baby's heart rate is between 110 and 160 beats per minute and and that line, it is not straight. It's got that beautiful jagged variability and there's at least two accelerations and we don't see any concerning decelerations. Chances are you're gonna be packing up and headed home and you'll follow up with your provider at your next prenatal appointment. But what happens if there is something missing or we see things that are concerning? Maybe your baby's heart rate is a little bit too high or it is a little bit too low or baby's quite sleepy and we're having a hard time seeing that variability or we're missing those accelerations or your baby is having decelerations accelerations, what's going to happen? Chances are your provider is going to send you for something called a BPP. That's your Gray's Anatomy word for a biophysical profile, which is a very detailed ultrasound. And then they can take the results of that ultrasound with the results of the NST and make some decisions based on your specific pregnancy. There is also a high probability that they will want to continue monitoring you until they see the reassuring things or bring you back for more closer monitoring more often in the pregnancy. This is definitely going to be a plan of care that is developed with your provider based on the findings of the testings that have been done. I do want you to be aware that when we put the monitors on for the NST or if you're on continuous fetal heart rate monitoring during labor, that something could come up on the monitor that has very, very concerning characteristics and it could prompt your provider to say, I want you to have your baby right now, which would be an emergency C-section to try to prevent any detrimental health effects for you or for baby. And I know that that sounds scary and that is rare, but it is a possibility for you to be aware of. But for the most part, NSTs are an incredible tool that we can utilize to take a peek in on baby and see how things are going. If you love this one, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the community so we can learn together. I love when you're here. And then go ahead and check out this video. There might be some more little Grey's Anatomy tidbits in this one that you might find enjoyable. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.